Hello and welcome to a revision session looking at Renaissance Medicine. Today we're going to recap the key factors, progress and um, regression seen in the Renaissance period as well as how to answer a nine mark exam question. Okay, so let's start off by having a think about factors which enable progress in the Renaissance period. Well, key factors include religion, technology, government, war and individual genius. And let's have a quick think about each of these. I'm actually going to start off with thinking about technology. This image here, courtesy of Google Images, shows us a printing press, something which was developed for the first time in the Renaissance period. Uh, you can see here it's a huge contraption. Uh, effectively, it's about the, the height of a human being. It would take a, a very fit man or woman uh, to uh, use this huge lever here to turn it round and round and round to lift this very heavy contraption up. Um, they then unfold this flap and they'd fill it with lots of little letters. They'd paste ink over the top of it. They'd then flap that back down and they'd turn this huge screw back down again uh, on top of the book to press it on top of all these metal letters with lots of ink on them. Uh, then they'd unscrew this again, uh, open it up, take the piece of paper out, put the next piece of paper in, screw the screw down again on top of the piece of paper and the letters with the uh, ink on them, unscrew it and take the page out again, uh, and so on and so forth. So they'd print all the page ones first, uh, and then all the page twos, all the page threes, etc. So it's not quite like the printers we have today. It would have taken a very long time uh, to print books and they were still very expensive. However, this was much quicker uh, and more efficient than writing everything out by hand. Uh, and there was also an av availability to print images as well. Um, and they do this by use of what was called a woodcut. So someone would engrave a piece of wood with an image uh, and then it would work the same as the metal letters. They would paste ink over the top of the uh, wooden image uh, and then put the screw up and down, up and down uh, on top of the um, pages to print the images. So for the first time uh, you could mass produce uh, or at least produce in much larger numbers uh, books uh, and images and things like that um, which could spread around therefore much more quickly so communication was much easier in the Renaissance than it had ever been before which was fantastic and we'll talk about why uh, further on in this clip. Um, also another really important uh, thing that enabled progress at this time uh, was actually uh, religion in a way, um, not necessarily religion itself, um, but uh, the fact that religion was declining in its uh, power at this time. So the Renaissance is the time uh, of Henry VIII splitting with uh, the Catholic Church and setting up um, the Protestant Church in England and proclaiming that he as the king uh, had all the power in the country and that he was the head of the church and therefore any laws made by the king and the government uh, were more significant and more powerful uh, than the laws made by the church at the time. Uh, and this growing power of government and decreasing power of religious organisations meant that things like dissection were allowed for much more widely uh, for the first time. Dissections um, were initially obviously started off in the medieval period being allowed but you had to do it to prove Galen's work but with renaissance well renaissance literally means the rebirth of ideas uh, they started to discover that Galen and Hippocrates had in fact uh, told people to inquire more and be inquisitive and do lots of investigation and not just accept uh, their ideas as truth. Uh, many Islamic writers had actually uh, retranslated the work of uh, Galen and Hippocrates and discovered this and that it should be inquiry and not conservatism, uh, that Hippocrates and Galen were uh, suggesting people should uh, use. And this led to some really important discoveries by individual geniuses. Um, and individual geniuses in particular is something that I wanted to talk about uh, in terms of progress that was made during this period. So, so the two probably most important individual geniuses in Renaissance were uh, William Harvey, uh, who discovered things about the motions of the heart, and also... Uh, Vesalius. 
Both individual geniuses made important discoveries about anatomy and developed anatomical knowledge in the Renaissance period. Part of this was because of the discovery, or rather development, of new, more realistic styles of art, which made it easier for them also to spread their ideas, uh, as well as the fact that the church had declined in uh, their power and they were able to do human dissection. Uh, Vesalius is a really interesting individual in that uh, he initially, when he starts dissecting bodies, discovers that Galen's wrong uh, and is really confused about it. Uh, he initially doesn't actually allow uh, the person who he invites to illustrate his ideas uh, and his discoveries to actually publish what he has found in its entirety. Uh, the tabulae sex is a really good example of this, and you can see it here. Um, the liver has been drawn with six lobes on it, even though we know because Vesalius had done human dissection, he would have seen the liver had only two lobes. So why did he get the illustrator to draw it wrong? Um, and he's definitely done it deliberately. Uh, well, he did it in his earliest work, I think most likely because he was afraid of conservatism. If he had drawn the image so that he had shown that Galen was completely wrong about this, maybe he was afraid that people wouldn't accept his idea because Galen's ideas had been accepted for thousands of years. Um, so he deliberately actually drew things wrong. So initially, he, he doesn't actually make much progress for medicine at all in terms of knowledge of anatomy. It's only much later on, uh, with these continuous new styles of drawing and lots of public dissections, he feels confident enough to publish a book called The Fabric of the Human Body, in which he explains with lots of images and descriptions uh, exactly what Galen is wrong about, to do with lots of nerve systems inside of the body and lots of human organs as well. Uh, another individual genius, um, who we've mentioned briefly already as well, um, who discovered that Galen was wrong and uh, proved it as well, uh, is William Harvey, who uh, talked about the motions of the heart. Previously, Galen had said that the heart uh, moved blood um, in the body, but he believed that the body burnt blood up and that the liver created new blood. And Harvey proved that this wasn't the case, that the blood was pumped around the body by the heart uh, continuously, so not like Galen suggested, just created blood, but it pumped it around the body, and that it was circulating round, hence the motions of the heart. Uh, and it wasn't burnt up, it just continued being used and reused and removed around the body. Um, now, both of these discoveries are fantastic because they show a much better understanding of how the body worked, but both individuals faced quite a lot of conservatism. We've already seen that Vesalius was afraid even to publish his ideas initially. He takes quite a long time to publish them. And Harvey, when he does publish his ideas as well, uh, although he publishes them more quickly, um, actually didn't have his ideas fully accepted by universities who were teaching medicine for around 50 years. And even then, when his ideas were accepted, they couldn't really be used to treat people because they didn't have other ideas developed yet or discoveries made about things like blood transfusion. So it wasn't possible to do things like uh, heart transplants, for example, until they discovered blood transfusions and could uh, deal with the problem of bleeding that would be needed uh, to do much more detailed surgery at the time. So the print press uh, helped develop surgery. Individual geniuses helped knowledge of anatomy. But in terms of actually being able to use this new knowledge to treat people, well, that idea wasn't here yet. And although it's true that uh, there was such thing as a microscope in the Renaissance and they were able to see small things, uh, they were still quite blurry under microscopes. So uh, they weren't able to make discoveries about germs or microbes at this time. So miasma still continued to be a very widely spread theory. Um, in terms of things might be interesting to have a look at here. We've got a, a page from Harvey's book on the motions of the heart. Again, you can see realistic styles of art uh, making it more possible to spread and communicate their ideas more widely. Uh, this is him uh, showing an illustration of uh, a proof that Harvey used that uh, blood was pumped around the body and not used up or um, kind of lost or burnt up. But he proved that if you put your finger on a vein or an artery that it would stop the blood from flowing in that area. So it's not being burnt uh, or used up, it just gets trapped in that area of the body. And when, let, when you let go, it continued flowing again. Um, 
Harvey's discovery about the motions of the heart was partly possible because of individual genius because um, he used to dissect frogs um, and he dissected frogs because they're cold-blooded, poor little frogs. Uh, he, he dissected them whilst they were still alive because they were cold-blooded, their hearts pumped more slowly and therefore it would take longer for them to die. So he could actually, not a pleasant thought, dissect a live frog and watch its heart pumping and learn lots about it by doing that. He also, uh, and this is an interesting one, uh, used technology to come up with this idea about the heart being a pump around the body as well, uh, because he looked at um, recently discovered, or rather developed in the Renaissance, water valves, which were being used by uh, fire crews in the Renaissance period. Um, and these water pumps uh, were had a valve in them which meant that water would only go one way and not flow back the other way uh, when you were using some sort of a, a pump or a hose or something like that. And he thought perhaps the heart was the same and that there were valves in the heart that prevented blood from going back uh, into the system and that it only pumped in one direction around the body. So some really interesting ideas there. In terms of uh, other factors that were affecting medicine at the time. Uh, well, the government didn't do an awful lot in the Renaissance period. Um, they weren't particularly investing in medicine, um, and although they were more powerful than the church and, and allowed dissection of humans to take place, um, they didn't really pass any hugely new laws uh, to help progress. Uh, it's true that we had the 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 plague return um, in the 1600s uh, and they did pass some new laws uh, to help spread the prevention uh, to prevent the spread of the illness for example um, the painting of white crosses on doors um, and they made laws about having watchers who were employed to make sure that people didn't leave the house of a person who was infected and had the white cross on the door uh, until a, a few weeks had passed or a few weeks after the last person had died in the house. Uh, no one was allowed to enter the house until a few weeks afterwards. That bodies had to be uh, buried a certain number of feet, six feet underground and that burials should only happen at night time uh, and things like this. And all of these laws were passed. It uh, did show some improvement uh, to public health uh, because it meant that the government was taking responsibility uh, for... Um, people's health um, was trying to improve it so it was taking some minor action because they were really worried about the spread of this uh, pestilence or the plague that returned in the 1600s um, and um, there were also obviously wars going on in the renaissance period as well uh, and some people made discoveries including Harvey himself made discoveries as a result of war. He was a battlefield surgeon and he noticed the spurting of blood, as did Paré as well. Paré was another battlefield surgeon uh, who's known for developing ligatures, which were silk threads, which could be tied around uh, blood vessels or arteries to try and stop or stem the bleeding. So war did also cause some progress in medicine at this time. So key progress that was made uh, was mainly in knowledge of anatomy uh, and uh, developing the, the spirit of inquiry and moving away from just accepting Galen and Hippocrates' ideas. Uh, but there was some regression or at least some continuity that continued in this period as well. So conservative ideas, not everyone was willing to accept the ideas of Harvey and of Vesalius. It took a very long time for them to be accepted. And although science had started to help in that people were inquiring, um, actually uh, there were still problems in that microscopes weren't strong enough to be able to see uh, really small things like bacteria and germs uh, and technology uh, again uh, microscopes weren't strong enough to be able to see those things okay so what might you be asked to do with this information in your exam well there's an example of a nine mark question for an Edexcel medicine through time legacy spec so for the 2017 uh, exam shown below. So we've got uh, the boxes below show two important discoveries in medicine. Choose one discovery and explain why it had such a limited impact on medical treatment at the time. So the key thing here is to break down the question really carefully. It says choose one discovery and explain why it had a limited impact on medical treatment at the time. So we need to think about why it had a limited impact on medical treatment. 
so let's have a look and see what uh, has been selected. And we can see here below uh, that we've got uh, it's William Harvey's discovery of the circulation of blood in the 17th century. So why did this have a limited impact on medical treatment at the time? In order to get yourself top marks in this type of question, um, it's important that you do the following things. You need to write three paragraphs in answer to this question. And you need to be writing in these paragraphs about uh, the context of medical knowledge and treatment at this time. And also you need to think about factors which stopped uh, or prevented progress or prevented change. So, for example, um, you might start off with a brief introduction where you set out uh, what William Harvey's discovery was and, and what was the potential for it. Well, he discovered things like the motion of the heart and how that pumped blood around the body. Well, what could that be used to do? So, briefly in your introduction, say, you know, what potential was there with this new discovery? Discovering that the heart pumps blood around the body is an anatomical thing. Uh, what could happen from there? What new treatment or possible cures could there be once he discovered this? So you've set out in your introduction uh, the new theory uh, that he had. Then you're going to give your first paragraph. So uh, this had limited impact on medical treatment because first paragraph, that's your point, give your evidence why did it have a limited impact? Which particular um, factors stopped there being change? Um, so could it be, for example, a lack of technology um, meant that they were unable to um, discover new things about blood groups at this time? So they didn't have powerful enough microscopes and uh, technology, good enough technology to look at things like blood groups. And if you don't know about blood groups, then what does that mean you can't do? Well, you can't do blood transfusions and if you can't do those you can't use your knowledge about heart uh, to do heart surgery and things like that because you if you're doing heart surgery you're definitely going to lose a lot of blood uh, well another reason why it's important so you have your second paragraph uh, and you're going to talk about either factors which stop change or you can use your context of medical knowledge and treatment at the time so you might talk about a second reason why his uh, discovery of the circulation of blood was uh, limit had a limited impact at the time was because of the conservative ideas and you talk about the fact that you know that people didn't accept ideas willingly very quickly that it's very uh, it's very new this idea of challenging the ideas of Galen and Hippocrates and that even people like Vesalius uh, didn't initially want to publish their findings when they found out that Galen was wrong and then you add a third a, thir a third and final paragraph uh, about why his ideas weren't accepted at the time. So think about further factors perhaps that inhibited his progress. Uh, even though it's true that there was a print press and that could be used to communicate ideas more quickly, it's still very expensive. It's a slow progress process even, um, and paper was still very expensive and not everyone would have access to the information that was published in the universities, etc., etc., so the key to getting uh, nine marks out of nine for this type of question uh, is three paragraphs. Um, each paragraph should focus on a particular either factor or knowledge of the context of the time to explain why uh, the person, individual or discovery had a limited impact on medicine at the time. Have a go at this question yourself so you can practice using these skills to get yourself nine marks out of nine. And all the best with your vision. Good luck this summer. I hope it goes really, really well.